I know there is a place you go called church but you belong to the bigger church the Greek word there is ecclesia that's why in the old apostles creed that church was called the catholic church now you need to understand we have the roman catholic but we are the real catholic because the name catholic means universal church but we have the roman universal that is headed by the pope but we are the real catholic headed by jesus Amen. hallelujah and so when you go to a city where the pastors who in the realm of the spirit appear as elders at the gate when there is that unity it means the business of the city is under spiritual management and that's how you know that a city is blessed and so i want to appreciate all the pastors that are here some are my seniors if not all and i'm just a young man who loves the lord period i wear suits on sunday so that i can look like a serious pastor but i'm a serious pastor it's only that we live in a culture where a pastor must be in a suit so we must fit in because even timothy was circumcised though that circumcision did not add to his spirituality it was for cultural reasons let me just throw some few scriptures i'm married to one who i hate blessed with two amazing children baby tyron and baby tiffany resident pastor life church in Demuru, and the founder truth mentorship society an author and a businessman but let me do the main business matthew 16 and verse 3 i want to talk about in the few minutes i have i think 30 minutes i want to talk about sensitivity to time and all oh, this is kjv and in the morning it will be fall weather today for the sky is red and lowering all ye hypocrites you can design the face of the sky but cannot design the signs of the time this is Jesus rebuking the Pharisees because they had the ability to predict what will happen in the natural but they did not have the ability to predict what will happen in the spiritual. He says you have the ability to look at the skies like in Kamulu there are people who tell you mvua ya huku inatokanga huko so hata huku kukwe black aje hakutanyesha and true to their word when you see clouds on this side and the winds intensify you know it's going to rain in kamulu or in the town so these are men that had the ability to interpret the nature but they were limited to interpret time by looking at the signs of the hour and knowing the time they were living in now every activity of god is tied to a certain time god lives out of time he's eternal but when man man lives in time so you have a god that lives out of time but he has programmed man to live in time so once in a while god visits man in the time of man and anytime we have those kind of visitations we call them revival because when eternity invades man 
in time many realities are suspended those are the things we call the moves of God and so time is so spiritual that even before the things of God happen the realm of the demonic can discern that God is about to move let's go look at a scripture in the book of Esther chapter number one Esther chapter number one should it be from verse 13 tell your neighbor understanding time everything in your life is locked up in time <coughs> one of my mentors told me imambo ya kumaliza ibada late kusema roho wa mungu wa ni mzuri na sio mzuri na kaniambia the holy spirit has eternity to move so haizi acha kumove so if we permit the holy spirit to move even next week you will still be moving but you you are programmed to live in time <coughs> so this is after queen vashti misbehaved and look at the king instead of the king going to the in-laws because when you have a problem with your wife you don't go to wise men you go to in-laws but the system of Persia was spiritual these wise men were not book wise they understood matters concerning the realm of the spirit then the king said to the wise men you can see you can read it there right what did these wise men know which knew the times for so was the king's manner to all that knew law <coughs> so this man needed to advise the king on what he needed to do in that time the queen has misbehaved and he consulted wise men who understood time and they also had understanding of law and judgment and they told him king fire vashti what they didn't understand in the same territory there was a wise man from zion mordecai who understood the spiritual time of heaven and Mordecai prepared Esther because there was a time urgency okay let me go slowly if Esther had not ascended to the throne the Jews would have died so the, the timing there there was a demonic assignment scheduled from hell but there was also a divine assignment scheduled from Zion the one that understood time and took advantage of time is the one that ruled and that's why Mordecai prepared Esther and when Esther ascended in power Esther 4 I think 14 Esther was reminded could it be that you are on the throne on such a time as this because Mordecai was an intercessor and he knew there is a vacancy in the palace but there is something God is doing in this time so if Mordecai pushed Esther to the palace now Esther in the palace and they could pick up a selfie afikiria me in the palace kutesa she would have missed the time and miss the assignment so that tells me when you understand time according to the calendar of zion you take advantage of the opportunities that are there when you read the, the story of elijah on mount Carmel, the bible says that while they were there i know it's on chapter four where he says you uh, yeah 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 oh it's 14. who knows whether thou are come to the kingdom for such a time as this because when this revival comes some of you will receive things you've never received anointings graces 
But why are you receiving? What is the demand of the time? Is it for you to wake up and say, everybody stand in the name of Jesus and everybody falls? That's not the idea. There must be a reason why there is a move of God coming to Kenya. And we must be time conscious. Because the wise men are also time conscious. If the church does not rise in the time, the demonic also have schedules. Because there are three moves that can hit a nation. The move of God, the move of the devil, or the move of men. And all the moves have attempted in Kenya. I will not share details, but there is a time I sensed there was a move of a man. And many moves of men don't stay for five years in Kenya. Judgment will always catch up. They either get exposed or they die. Or a crisis happens and they are neutralized. That, that's, then we have the move of the devil. That's now the demonic wave. You go to high schools. People are in lesbianism, gayism, smoking weed. You know the move of the devil. And then you can have genuine move of God. Where you go to a school and everyone gets born again. People are just looking for Jesus. You don't, even to, you don't need to threaten them with hell. You just ask them, do you need Jesus? And they say yes. In tears, you know now the move of God has it down. That the hearts of men are melting. And they are seeking God. They are not looking for concerts. Prayer cashers are full. Than praise and worship events. I'm not saying praise and worship is bad. But there is a hunger for God. You begin to know God is moving. Yes. Hallelujah. So. Elijah understood. He said let's meet at Mount Carmel. Prepare your altar. And I prepare mine. And he waited. But the Bible says. When the time. Or the hour. Of the sacrifice of oblation came. He now at Tended to his altar all along he waited for them to do whatever they needed to do on their altar but the bible says when the hour or the time now Elijah is a model of a revivalist meaning that if revival must enter we must understand the divine timing of Zion because the moves of God and the seasons of God are locked up in time and that's why when he knew it is the hour of the sacrifice of oblation the Bible says he told them to pour water because that sacrifice needed something poured on the altar and when that time came heaven answered by fire if he had prayed one hour earlier he will not have received the results he received. It was an alignment to time. When the time. Hmm, when the time of the sacrifice of oblation. I just came to bring an awareness of time. Hallelujah. Because let me go to the key scripture. In the book of Luke chapter number 7 chapter number 19 Luke 19:42 Luke 19:42 Let's read it Do you have a, a simpler version like NKJV This is for bishops and senior apostles for members, you, this one of thy thou, we can read it. But for members, you give them this one. Saying, if you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Look at 43. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side. And level you and your children within you to the ground and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation go to 
45 then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it stay there begin from 14 but he answered and said to them i tell you that if this should keep silent the stone will immediately cry out 41 now as he drew near he saw the city and wept over it this is what we call the entry of jesus into jerusalem hallelujah hallelujah part of what i'm believing god is part of what is coming as the revival is what i call the ezra revival where people will begin to want to know what does this book mean revelations hunger for the word so jesus is entering into jerusalem and before he enters he comes and tells his disciples Matthew 21 puts it clearly that there were two donkeys that were tied an old donkey and a young donkey but when you read in the old KJV the Bible says Jesus said untie the donkey and the young donkey and bring them to me that, that's what old kjv in matthew 21 there are two donkeys there when i read it in kjv i discovered it was the old donkey that was tied that's what i discovered so when the old donkey is tied naturally the young donkey cannot do anything unless what it sees the old donkey do when the old donkey is free because i live in limuru and we and i see donkeys over again and straight away shall find an ass tied and a cold with her are you seeing it so what is tied that word there i know in kenya it means something different young people born as free but this is what we call american english but please don't use this version in kenya but that simply means the old donkey that's why i'm using the old donkey hallelujah now when you look at that you realize it is the old donkey that was tied and the young donkey was stagnant am i speaking to anyone and what i have discovered if the fathers are not moving a generation cannot move that is why right now the lord has begun to start the fathers and the fathers are now saying we need to go out for crusades a generation is getting lost but what they don't know as they are rising they are rising with us as the young people as they are moving we are moving with them because when the old donkey is tied the young donkey has no clue what should we do and that's why kenya there is a visitation that is touching the two generations it is touching the old donkey is being untied suddenly the fathers are saying wait a minute you mean we have these anointings we have these graces what have we been doing can we go out and impact on a generation because god does not work with one generation he said i am in need of them both he never asked for the old donkey he said bring the old and the young Is someone getting me there has always been a mistake for long and i bless the man of god for correcting the order because many times the fathers gather and they organize a meeting and our parents go but the young donkey does not attend now we are getting into a season of the meeting of the old and the young donkey and please allow the young donkeys to jump like young donkeys you old donkeys <laughs> a 
and for the young donkeys allow the old donkeys to behave the way they behave because they are old hallelujah there are things they may not understand but the lord is gathering them both because the last prophecy was i will reconcile the hearts of the fathers back to the sons and the heart of the sons back to the fathers so the lord is in need of them both so even the tent meeting we are doing is it cannot be called young or old is an assembly of the young donkey and the old donkey hallelujah and so you young donkeys any meeting happening in kenya please show up it's not for the old donkey <laughs> i think i should have called my message donkeys <laughs> the old donkey and the young donkey because we must correct the pattern and then jesus said i am in need of them both and then this is what happened when the young donkey and the old donkey were untied untied i love the word there jesus said tell the owner the master that's a very powerful word so there is the owner of the donkey but there is the master who owns the owner of the donkey and his donkeys when that sound thunders it comes to pastors to tell us the owner of the members is in need of his church we are just caretakers and we must release them and that's why i'm happy with kamulu because you have broken the religious dominational chain that first you belong to the master but the master has given you to an owner but when the master calls even the owner knows i must release because they are not mine and this is what happened when the donkeys were brought the apostles this might be deep for some of you but mumesoma sana zilevdu mesoma kampona college technical the apostles took their garments and placed them on the donkey the apostles the women placed their garments on the ground but the apostles placed their garments on the donkey it is called a covering I know we are hearing prophetic apostolic it was the disciples garments that jesus sat on they put it there on the donkey both of them because matthew tells us he sat on them not him or her and rode on them both how jesus rode i don't know whether in sheep If the Bible says that Jonah swallowed the fish, I will believe. <laughs> because God cannot lie. But the Bible puts it clearly in Matthew that he sat on them both. Because he needed both of them. And the garments were placed a symbol of apostolic cover. Apostolic has everything to do with doctrinal alignment and the teachings and pointing men to Christ that was the cover upon the donkeys but when i read this scripture it also opened my eyes and i discovered that the weight of jesus did not change when he landed on the young donkey okay i'll explain the young donkey did not carry a lesser jesus compared to the old donkey they all bore the weight of jesus hi i 
can dwell there. Si hadi kulikuwa na Yesu mdogo wa kupanda ile punda ndogo. Yule Yesu alikalia ile punda mzee. Ndio bado alikalia ile punda ndogo. Meaning that we must raise a generation. A generation that can bear the weight of Jesus. That one I'm still meditating. Najua kumekaa nikaa kuna heaven ya matini. Kuna heaven ya small donkey na the old donkey. Kuna kanga ni kama tini anafaa kuomba 1 hour. Mokoro anafaa kuomba 3 hours. Bible inasema Yesu alikalia zote. That young donkey had the capacity to bear the burden of Jesus. Because this kingdom is a burden. Yeah. I don't know if it is in 2 Kings chapter number 9 from verse 1. Let me confirm. 2 Kings 9 verse 1. I'm not sure. But let me confirm. And show you something. Yes. If you can read read it 1 to 3. look at what happened look at 3 You see hey, Mungu afungue masikio yenu musikie. Kuna masikio wange nasikia kiroho. Wakati Elijah alikuwa, alikuwa na shule inaitwa the school of the prophets. Elijah. Na Elijah, Mungu aliangalia among all the prophets. Aka realize hakuna mwenye ako na capacity ya kwa anoint Elisha Jehu na the king of Syria Akambia Elisha Elijah chukua mafuta enda utafute Jehu mfalme wa Syria na Elisha wa anoint Ju Elijah alikuwa amefika place kwa ministry aka give up Alikimbia akatafuta Elisha successor wake aka anoint na wakati alienda heaven wale sons alikuwa na raise kwa the school of the prophets waliona akienda lakini bado wakaenda kumtafuta kwa vichaka elisha aka take over the school of the prophets wakati wa ku anoint jehu alituma mtu akamwambia enda ule utapata ai There was no specific name because every son in that congregation was a carrier of power. Ah. Una imagine pastor Kotao anasema eh eh shida ni nini? Mama ni mgonjwa. Ingia kanisani. Ule utapata. Mwambie akuombe. I don't need to come from town to come and pray for you. I have raised sons. That's the word there. Look at it. And Elisha called one of the sons of the prophets and say to him, "Get yourself ready. Take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. One of the sons, random. Where come? Chukua mafuta. Go and anoint Jehu." as a king this is the generation we need to raise a generation that can bear the weight of Jesus my burden is lighter 
when Jesus sat, the Bible says, let's celebrate the man of God. Are you learning something? I have five minutes, I finish. Are you learning something? So, our shoulders must grow to a level that we can bear the weight of Jesus. Look at the book of Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse 6. I know you think this is a Christmas scripture. Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Everybody read. Please, everybody, one, two, three. Hold it there. Tell your neighbor, children are born. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God has never worked with children, but He loves children. Tukosawa makapo. Na mungu anapenda watoto lakini apendi utoto. Makapo tukosawa. Then unto us a son is continue and and the government shall be now just hold it there there must be a grown shoulder that can bear the government of God kuna time nilikuwa ni mkasubui Nikona mtoi. Ame bebeshua bag. Mbaka kitembea na tembea hivi. Nika shindo mamake ni nani? Mungu wakaniambia. This is how my children look. They are too small. To bear what I want to put on their shoulder. And because I'm not an abusive father. I don't place it. Now this is the problem. The difference between a child and a son. A child depends on God a son God depends on a child kila kitu mungu nifanyie but a son is one that can go and tell heaven the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing to do the assignment that you have given me a son heaven depends on that's the difference even in our homes children depend on their parents everything kulishwa diaper kulalishwa but when you mature if you have a mother like mine she will confirm to you dependency remote iko hapa na ako hapa na atakutoa bedroom kwambia nipelele hii remote asikia kumwambia mom Sindio hii anasema ah niliza nipelele. Sasa hiyo nikukwambia now I can depend on you. Because you are now a son and your shoulders can bear some weight. Hallelujah. So even in the kingdom we must graduate from children. And this has nothing to do with age. Spiritual, spiritual growth is a product of spiritual discipline. Reading the word. Attending prayer. You can have 10 years church experience. But in the realm of the spirit, you are a child. Oh, I've seen my friend here. Oh Lord, my kuja home. Joe, this is my architect. He's a serious man. God bless you, sir. Listen, and you can have two ears in God, but you're an elder in the spirit. So it's not how long you have been in church, it's how long you have been with him. He took ordinary fishermen for three years. He commissioned them as global apostles. One of the apostles there, when he called him, he was 17. By the name of John. The one who wrote Revelation. He was 17. At 20. He was commissioned. As a global apostle. Yeah. Hey. So this thing we are calling revival. Is not about people falling under the anointing. Is a maturity. 
to handle the anointing. And that calls for spiritual display. Some of you when your dressing will change. You can't carry nations and dress like a thug. No. Okay. Let's go back to scripture. I do have to change. I do have to change. I do have to change. Assignment yako ni akamulu uwezi change. Ukijua Amerika na kongojea, hakuna mtu atakwambia utafute suti. Hakuna mtu atakwambia usiweke tatu. It is the it is the details of your assignment that dictate the posture of your preparation. No, kauko hapa kamulu, tala, machako, skangundo, abo, sakuna mambo mingi. Hapo unaeza, unaeza, kanisa itakuelewa. But there are territories you enter and they judge you by your appearance. Because they know carriers of this thing operate with a certain display. The spirit has dealt with them. So Jesus enters into Jerusalem. He's sitting on the two donkeys. The people are there laying down their garments and they are singing Hosanna and they don't know what they are singing. Then Jesus looks upon Jerusalem and he cries. Why is Jesus crying? Because he already knew the same people singing Hosanna, Hosanna will crucify me. And the day they crucify me, there will be judgment over Jerusalem. And Jerusalem will be destroyed after I die on the cross. So what he was looking at, if their eyes were opened to know that I'm the Messiah and they fail to crucify me, the judgment that is held against them will not have been released. He understood the details of that judgment. So he said, O ye Jerusalem, if only you knew the hour of your visitation you would have repented but because they were not sensitive to time they missed a major move of God and Jerusalem was charged in 70 AD for students of history go and study that judgment it's one of the mega judgments Somali here is a Muslim nation because when Ludwin Kraft the man who brought Christianity in Kenya was not coming to Kenya he was headed to Somali but he was delayed in Mombasa and then there were wars in Somalia and the man never entered and that's how almost a hundred years later that nation is not a Christian nation so Kenya if we miss what God has ordained in this season, we are not sure of our recovery. Hallelujah. There are prophecies. Them that can read the sky spiritually, the signs are there. The Lord is setting up Kenya for a mega, major revival. It is here with us and God is moving. May we not miss our appointed time. May we not miss our appointed time. He may not move as he moved in the 70s but I know he's moving in a unique way. Some of you will begin rallies on TikTok. That's where the generation is. They may not show up in a stadium but the Lord will anoint you that anytime you go live on TikTok, a generation is following. Those are the kind of riots we are talking about. And nobody you are shiksum TikTok not even an apostle or a pastor but when you enter midnight prayer, 2,000 young people are following. And they are not even calling you pastor. But the move has begun. This one is different. But God is doing something in our day. May we not miss it. 
Let us be where he is lifted. Let us understand the spiritual clock. Because East Africa is waiting on Kenya. Whatever is happening in Kenya is beyond our borders. Tanzania will benefit. Rwanda, Sudan, Ethiopia, Burundi, Congo, they will benefit. Because this nation has prophecies of revival. And it will not be delayed. May we run with it. And let me say this, and I'm saying it with a lot of humility. And I was very humbled when they organized that meeting. I have been having a cry. Because there is a mindset where we believe revival can only be brought by foreigners. I want to believe God. God is going to raise men in our midst. I, I went to Nigeria the day I landed the watchman invited me for a healing meeting that was organized by Pastor Chris Oyakilome healing, three days of healing and he never invited me in church Apo in their gate alikuwa mepewa TV na viti aite tu watu 20 wa attend healing meeting kwa hoteli that was the same season that Joshua Selman came. When I came, I said, what will stop the generation of Akina Joshua Selman from believing God for miracles whereas their fathers are doing three days of healing? The next generation will have a model that Jesus can heal. And things were happening live on TV. That was one. You go to a man called Eneche. Dr. Eneche. He has a church of 100,000 sita. And he still does one on one. And open air crusades. Yeah. What will stop a young man. Who just has a degree. From preaching in the market. That's why I believe. God must raise our own. <laughs> so that. We are not talking about. Saudi Arabia and Nigeria we are talking about Tala and saying there is a young man running a movement of prayer where young people gather to pray for 24 hours by the time you leave Kangundo you come to Kamulu there is a young woman operating under healings and she's not even a nobody but the Lord is partnering with her what will happen a generation will begin to say this thing is not in Nigeria it's here. It can be done here. That is the kind of models we must set. We must break the ceilings. I like what Apostle Kemani does. The man has broken ceilings. That if you are a young preacher in Kenya, you can believe God for a city, believe God for a mega church, believe God for a tent revival, because our own is doing it. So we must celebrate them. Because it will not come from outside. I was in Eldoret, and early morning, early morning, I saw an athlete. He was in his tears around six in the morning, running. But in that running, come on, in that running, young children wearing uniform were running with him. The man is doing his morning routine. But, and I discovered these young children can see their future in that man. Because they know this town has produced global athletes. It is possible. They are not running with an image of an American. Where they think this one can only be done in America. No. They are running saying this is Kipchoge Keino. This one has broken the records. We know it can be done in our day. This is my prayer. May the Lord begin to raise men in our midst. They are not out of Kenya. They are in our land. May the Lord begin to raise men. Our own. People we have gone to school with. People we have suffered with. People we have cried with. But we can sense the hand of the Lord is upon that person. So that we can inspire our generation. We need to read our Kenyan version of God's general. 
people that has conquered territory people that has driven out witches out of territories that is how we are going to inspire generation may the lord raise you as a role model in our day where young people can arise in faith and say our father's spirit we can also do it in our day that is what we need in kenya and that's where the young people we must arise the founding father of nigeria was idahosa the sons he gave birth to bishop oyedepo chris oyakilome that man taught them faith they took it to another level now the third generation the third generation is where we are having joshua selma so you can trace the dna they are not building out of their fathers they they are building from their fathers you study kenya some of our fathers are still alive we need to understand our dna some of our fathers are still there our apostle joe kyle he's still alive he's a father of doctrine you can we still have another generation of fathers who are still there in fact our generation is the fourth generation and if you understand this is the finishing generation because in a relay you have four men that's why the fathers are rising and saying whatever we began we want to see how it's gonna end because we began something but a relay has a law the first law of relay is that the baton is not given from down it's given from above meaning that there must be a generation submitted under the other ready to receive whatever they are a relay a person must finish their race so that you can run your race our race is not their race we cannot do what our fathers were doing we are picking from where they were this is what the bible says the last miracle of elijah was the first miracle of elisha the last miracle was opening the jordan that is what elijah did the first miracle of elisha was opening the jordan meaning that ah where our fathers left it that's where we must pick it from by now Kenya we should be talking of mega churches not beginning other churches because it has been done and a generation must arise but the final thing I discovered in a relay is that men don't don't practice separately the fact that this is the next generation they don't practice separate anyone running in a relay this being the first generation all of us must exercise together because we are running the same race we are running the same race it's only that his time and my time are different but i must know his speed ha. so mantles are not given to a lesser generation they are given to a generation that can catch up because they are taking it further so they can't insult the labors of the fathers and that's where the problem is many fathers are running alone they are they are in the practice alone morning glory alone lunch hours alone even in prayer alone then there is a young man waiting for a mantle where elisha was asked what do you want he said a double portion the father looked at him and said you have asked for a hard thing it is not easy and the day we make it easy it will never have value it will be abused so i came to give a charge young people it's time to rise hallelujah may we be the ones to feel the morning glories the days of our mothers waking up at five are over let that old woman rest no let her rest take charge of your life no no you can't be a prayer item for the rest of your life 
you must reach a place and tell mama you have prayed enough now i am the man here young i will take over from where you are tell me what you need in this house a generation must arise and we are not leaving you behind we are going to run with you hallelujah the god we are going to encounter is the god you are going to encounter our testimonies will be your testimonies you will see god in our day something will be activated so that in our old age we can sit like david david killed one giant but he knew he had four brothers he had four stones left another generation came and there was war he went to that battle he almost died the sons told him sit down let's handle the giants every generation has their giants to kill my spiritual father came and asked me what is this thing ask him what this lgbt what is L i told him sir leave that giant to us that's a giant in our day we know it that giant called lgbtq we know it that giant called depression and suicide we know it that giant called generation z and don't care we know it leave it to us and he said you have my blessing i told him you go in the mountain lift up your hands that lgbtq will deal with it they can refuse us visas but they can't cut our voice because the facebook goes where we cannot go so every generation has their giants if you see the next to a young man tell that young man is talking to you tell that young man that giant called masturbation ah uh, pornography tell that young man that giant called weed and gang porn those are the giants of our day and they will not kill a generation we are here to deal with them i say we are here to deal with them that's why we must arise i say that's why we must arise my time is up i came to make an announcement that we shall have a meeting like this is it the end of this month or october yes i lost dates because i'm fasting so i'm in the i'm in the schedule of heaven beginning from friday the 6th to sunday the 8th of october 2023 friday 3 p.m to 7 p.m saturday 9 a.m to 6 p.m sunday rally p.m. to 6 p.m. will be gathering at Kamulu mega tent meeting this is not just a meeting is a barracks recruitment center because the days of members are over the end time needs a militant church so we want to recruit remember in any recruitment agency some people don't qualify and there's no problem so please invite all your fellow soldiers and it's going to be a very serious recruitment agency we are believing god we will raise kingdom mercenaries recruitment kama wako na demonic agents tutakuwa na ma agents wa mbingo and we want to believe there will be such an impartation so all the young and the young at heart there is no nigerian coming it's only that my friend bishop dixon will be coming to visit me so anakuja tuku tutembelea this is our kenyan meeting bring the sick the bible says we'll lay hands we don't heal jesus heals but our hands will be available we will exercise our faith 
and we are praying for this meeting so mbogia wase wa yang ndo hiyo plot ndo hiyo plot deadly kuliko za kamulu friday amenia mungu tu that mboka yako itaisha mapema ukienda dubai friday hakunanga mboka watu maliza kazi thursday you friday ni siku ya muskiti so ambio jirani friday maliza mboka mapema nikishasema hivyo najua the old donkey wa mehang ambia jirani friday maliza mboka mapema tupatane base saa tisa mpaka saa moja mwambie kinaweza umana so saa moja ni open Hallelujah. Just ride and those kwa menda nga dunda. Kukunywa wine and spirit. Tunaweza mwapia si tulewe Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Inaitwa Joel's Bar. Pale Joel alisema watalewa Joel's Bar. Hapo hapa room. Sato kuanzia 9 mpaka 6. Hiyo sato funga mboka. Siku moja yezi fanya uko usote. Siku moja unaweza pata prophecy ya maisha. Sotokea. Sunday suna jua ni rali. Bwana asifiwe sana. Na please usilete watu wameokoka kuja na magaidi. Wakutane na magaidi wa kiroho. Aondo watu tunataka. Leta masle queen. Leta watu wenye wanasumbuliwa na wababa na wamama. Waambie kuna mubaba alipatana na mumama wa Samaria akaambia wa baba amepatana na mubaba Bwana asifiwe So we'll be here and I personally came to tell you if every one of us just invited five young people not just necessarily those who are born again o on sato sande tunde on tavasuti lakini kutoka Friday mimi nakuja kama mimi na tunakujia generation. Bwana asifiwe. And our generation must be saved. So mimi naona nikata mimi yangu imedai. Acha nipeane mic kwa ma old donkey. Wapigia announcement bila anaitambua. Hata is God bless sana.